Welcome everyone to another edition of Endgame Finance. Today I want to give you guys an update about Rivian. There's been some recent news and so I'm going to go over these uh, case by case basis and just to let you guys know why I'm still remaining long in Rivian shares. I'm a long term investor and for me personally, if you're not going to be in the company invested for at least two to three years, you really have no business in owning this stock. This stock will be extremely volatile over the next few months, possibly in the next few years. If you can remember Tesla, Tesla was extremely volatile and Rivian is most likely just going to follow suit. Shares going to be going up and down constantly. There's going to be a lot of FUD in the news. And speaking of FUD, let's get into this article from CNBC. Now CNBC put out an article that basically claims that Rivian has a demand problem, which is obviously false because Rivian has an extreme waiting list. They have over 200,000 vehicles that are still just waiting to be built going to be pushed out. They have an extremely huge backlog. So this news article from CNBC, is, it's just false. It's just false. And if you remember Tesla, uh, these guys also attacked, attacked Tesla for a long time. They pretty much claimed that Tesla had no demand, that Tesla was going to go under, that Tesla is going to go bankrupt. But like you see, Tesla actually pulled through and basically proved that media is actually just full of FUD. They're just making stuff up for clicks, for views. And this claim that Rivian actually has uh, slowed down in demand is just plain wrong. If anything, I would assume that Rivian backlog actually increased significantly, but Rivian has stopped publishing those facts, mostly because they don't want to upset their current reservation holders. Because if the backlog goes to three, four hundred thousand units, people will see they might have to wait another two to three years to get their vehicle. And that's not acceptable for many people. They just don't want to have that idea that their vehicle will not be ready for three to four years. But Rivian is actually ramping up production. And let's just get into this. Rivian still has over $12 billion in cash. They don't really need cash yet. They don't need to raise cash yet. They had enough money to fund operations for the next two years. That includes building out the Georgia factory. They will be producing their low cost model. <clears throat> and basically their cash burn will still last two years. However, Rivian has just announced that they're actually raising $1.3 billion in green bonds. These are bonds for company that are basically transitioning from oil onto cleaner energy, such as Rivian, so they're called clean bonds. Rivian issued these bonds, these convertible notes. These bonds will be able to be converted into shares if certain um, marks are met. However, Rivian raised $1.5 billion, and they may, mainly did this because they want to ramp up production. Like I said, Rivian has still enough cash for two years, so it makes sense for them to take this money out so they can speed up production, so they can start getting rid of that backlog, those hundreds of thousands of vehicles. They're still uh, waiting to be built out. And in addition to these 1.3 billion, they have an option to raise another $200 million. So total raise will be around 1.5 billion, most likely. And Rivian does still have around $750 million in revolving credit lines. So that puts them around $2.25 billion in additional capital. Rates will remain elevated and this will impact high risk stocks like uh, Rivian. So Rivian might not even do anything bad, but their shares will most likely tank if the whole market tanks just because Fed has said they will expect the rates to stay on longer. This is pretty much what I predicted in one of my previous videos. So as rates remain higher for a longer time, people are not able to afford vehicles. They're not able to afford houses. Uh, last year, two years ago, you can probably finance a car for two to three percent. Now it's looking at five to ten percent. So vehicles are getting marginally more expensive. However, I don't see this being a huge deal for Rivian because they are a luxury brand. They are the vehicles are close to hundred thousand dollars. So whoever buys their cars, they're not really worrying about cash that much. They can already afford to buy these cars. And like we like I said earlier, they have a huge backlog, which basically confirms that people want these luxury goods. So that's pretty much what I want to talk to you guys about. I just want to let you know that I'm still long Rivian shares. Like I said in the beginning, if you're not in Rivian for long term, if you're, if you're in this stock just periodically or just temporarily, you will most likely lose some money just because there's going to be extreme volatility. Because this is a startup, you have to put your faith into this company. And I do. I really like this company. What I don't like is actually I was in Europe for business. So I dropped by Rivian Tech Center in Belgrade. You know, Tesla was there. Ford was there. So I went to Tesla Ford. And I came to the Rivian office and there was just no one there. It was 3 p.m. And Rivian Tech Center in Europe in Belgrade was, there was no one manning it. I mean, come on, guys. You're only as strong as your weakest link. And I don't really like the little things that 
basically show cracks in the company. Like I said, Tesla was fully manned. Tesla people were extremely, extremely enthusiastic. Ford was there, electric chargers. They were, you know, building out in that area over there. So it's pretty cool. I wanted to take some pics of Rivian, of Rivian HQ. Unfortunately, I was not able to, but I still have full confidence in their management. I have full confidence in RJ. I do think this chief financial officer does need to work on the timing when they announce certain news. You know, you can't really announce bad news when the stock is completely tanking. That will exacerbate the selling and that will exacerbate the selling. It will impact the stock price. And when you need to raise cash, you would rather raise cash when the stock price is elevated. You don't want to dilute the shares too much. For example, this convertible note, 1.2 billion, that will like, most likely end up to be 1.5 billion. This will dilute the shares around 10% if they are actually converted at a specific price. However, Rivian has also stated that they might just buy these bonds back. They will not allow conversion of the shares if the stock price is actually just too high. So we'll see how this ends up. But like I said, I still have full confidence in this company. They are revving up production. They're selling vehicles. And that's what really matters here. That's what really mattered for Tesla when they were ramping up their production. As long as they're pushing out product, as long as the management is managing their cash burn and Rivian will be net positive, gross, gross profit positive next year, which means they will finally be selling vehicles at a price that's actually breaking them even or actually making them some profits. So that's it, guys. Just want to give you a quick update on Rivian. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please let me, let me know below and we'll discuss it. And as always, guys, have a great day.